Now you can see by the uh, daylight behind me, it is yet another day. This time it's actually daytime that I'm choosing to go ahead and work on this uh, XRT poor XRT poor man's XRT conversion. I do have a parts list. I do have a parts list. I don't know if you can see, but that dang parts list is from the top to the bottom. Every individual line outlined with prices and part numbers and exactly what the part is to go ahead and if you want to convert your trash bag or your prized X-Max, you want to go ahead and maybe do a conversion on it. Now the parts listed will only be the parts that were realistically necessary to convert an X-Max in its stock form, not talking about electronics, but I just mean an X-Max in its stock form, converting that over to an XRT. Some of the parts, uh, it's kind of like a toss up of whether you need it or not. So I may put it in at the end, but what I'm doing is I'm going to give you a chassis breakdown of what you need. Now to pick up, this is part 12. I actually, I really didn't think this was going to go that far, but it did. It's taken a lot, lot of time. It's took a lot of time. I'm doing it without a manual. I mean, will I ever reference a manual for part numbers? Yes, I will. But am I looking at screw depth and all that stuff? No, I'm just using, I'm just using eyesight and screwing up. Honestly, screwing up. It happens, man. It gets late. Now I'm going to use the it's late excuse. There is no excuse for messing up, but I will be using that for this build. So anyways, if you want to see what it's going to take in part 12 to move forward, I think this is where, I think this is where we're at an end. The only thing I need to do now still is either cut the body to go ahead and fit this bad boy. Someone had mentioned uh, possibly relocating the holes. The problem is, is that relocation of the holes is really not going to happen because of the way the wing is configured figured on the back. There's, there's strength in certain areas of, you know, this wing and how it's done. And I'm trying to maintain that strength. That's why I was kind of hesitant with chopping this stuff off. And I may just go ahead and chop the body. Reason why is because if I chop the body to fit the wing, I think I can actually get the wing to slip in and the body will somewhat ride. I think it's not going to be perfect, but I think I can get the body to kind of ride inside. So it'll kind of fit like right on top. I did some body fitment stuff. It was on camera. I haven't touched this thing other than to take the picture for the thumbnail. I haven't moved anything. As a matter of fact, I lost a screw walking down the stairs when I, and I, of course I didn't hear it hit. I lost a screw walking down the stairs and I did find it. So I'm not doing anything off camera. So, well, other than doing that foam around the receiver, I did do that off camera because that was lame. But yeah, so we're gonna, right now I've got the truck turned around. I'm gonna fit on the front bumper and that's where we're beginning this. I am done with this cover so I can go ahead and fit the cover on right now where it sits fully done with suspension other than the fact that there's one part of the suspension that you don't know that may be incorrect i'm kind of okay with it right now and i'll see if there's a benefit to running it this way if there isn't i will switch out to the pieces that i actually need which will end up costing me i think like 50 bucks in order to switch the truck over to the way i want it so suspension is uh, i guess you could say i guess you could say the suspension is 95 and I'll count 5% even though it's a major uh, major component. I'll count that as a 5% difference because that's literally just swapping out. You kind of get the idea. Swap it out and swapping in. So if you, if you get the uh, clue, I get my hands... So you kind of, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I know you know what it is now. I'm going to go ahead and throw this cover on. That's two screws. Mount the switch. ESC's all set. I got to find my gearbox cover. And I also need to grease my front and rear diffs. Uh, I don't have a free... Freak out. She freaked out over the body. But that, that's where we are. I'll, I'll cut the body and fit the rear wing. And literally this, this thing, I think, is ready to rip. Going through this whole process, again, this is all talk. Going through the process of building this XRT or X-Max XRT or X-Max RT, whatever I'm going to call it. It may, I may just call this thing the mongrel. Mongrel RT. Maybe that's what I, I mean, this was a trash bag. I like the word mongrel because that's kind of what it is. You do not need to go out. I got to let her out. Right I've here. never, I've never had like the need or desire for a doggy door but i'm starting to think i need to put a doggy door so she can just go in and out at leisure that would that would take so much off of off of us that would take so much off of us the only thing is the doggy door needs to be the size of her and that's big so all right pan this thing down let's get this project let's get this project hopefully wrapped up here so we are now working on the front bumper. Obviously the truck is increasing in length because now I've got the wing on the back. And yes, the wing topples. It already topples the stuff over, but... So here we go. All right. 
Wing should be pretty easy. Uh, screws, I do believe I've got wing. Front bumper. Front bumper should be pretty easy. It's not a wing. So I did get the front bumper for the XRT. I believe this is probably the way to go because the front bumper for the Traxxas X-Max just doesn't work. It's too much weirdness. I like the way I think this is looking. So this is uh, part number 7835. $12.99 from Hobby Quarters. They had it, obviously, in stock. They literally... Oh, it goes all oh, my coffee. Oh, my God. My coffee just spilled all over the place. It's awesome. What the fuck? Okay. Well, apparently, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tempt fate. I don't know if you notice... But there's a clean spot. Well, the reason why there's a clean spot, I don't even know where I cut off the camera. If I cut off the camera, I don't even know where I am right now. I won't see it until the footage is edited. But I pretty much had a full cup of coffee and I bumped the coffee cup over. It did have its lid on it. But when it, when it hit, <laughs> the cover hit something which caused the cover to pop off. So... The entire contents of a brand new hot full coffee just went all over my bench, man. So now I've got a clean spot. So there's a couple of things that are going on right now, okay? Number one, let's just say you come across somebody that's having a bad day. Like me. Coming across somebody that's having a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Coming across somebody that's having a bad day. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know whether they just spilled their gi their gigantic vente, capa, whatever, blackachino, whatever the heck those people drink. The Starbucks, you know, ultra tall, venti, frothy foam, all that garbage, right? Maybe they just spilled it in their Porsche. Their brand new Porsche. Well, maybe they spilt it in their Tesla and now the car is having some kind of uh, electrical experienced issues. So you don't know the kind of day. Now, I was having a bad day cleaning this up. I was not happy. Part of the reason why is because keeping your area clean is definitely a good thing. And, and <laughs> what I just went through kind of proves that. So everything, everything, I had to throw stuff away. Everything got covered in coffee, so anyways, where were we? We're back on the, yeah, we're back on the XRT. Maybe it would have been funny to keep on camera, but maybe the language wouldn't have. <laughs> Come on, guy, you know I'm not perfect here. All right, so we were working on this. I think this is where we were. 7835, uh, Hobby Quarters, $12.99 for a bumper. So we will go ahead and snap open the knife. Slice this bad boy over and then rip out the pieces that we need here, which is both. Gives you the front bumper, uh, which can accept the light. I do have a light kit too. And the uh, the actual bumper mount, which is the most important part. So this part is going to go down on the truck like this. So very easy. We're going to put this down on the truck like this. Uh, you know what? Am I missing that little rubber piece? I am, but you know what? Check it out. So I think that goes there. There we go. So for some reason, I was missing that bumper piece. Uh, oh no, that means I need to put it in the back too, I think. All right, so this bolts down onto here. This will slide into here. So that slides into there, that bolts onto there. And then, the front bumper, obviously, is going to bolt on like this. So let's get these bolts in and see what this thing looks like. So I am going to use the... Uh, should I use these? Yeah. I don't need to, though. That is ultra long. I had some 25s here somewhere. These are M30s. So that's these. Might have to use these. But I had some 25s. So we've got M12s. We got 12. That ain't it. Pin kit. That. That. Oh man. What happened? Did I throw it away? There's no way I ran out of screws. I bought a whole ton of screws. All right, somehow I've misplaced it. I know I had screws. 
Did I have an episode and threw them away? Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Uh, M16s. I thought I had... Get the... That ain't it. I mean, even coffee got inside of this. That's how... And look at this coffee still in there. <laughs> That's how bad this was, man. I, I really had an episode. Oh, stuff's still falling. Okay. So what it was is I had these. I already used them. Okay. Alright. So M22s is already what I used. So I'm going to have to go ahead and use these right here. They are going to be a little bit long. But um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not in the mood to fight this anymore i'm not fighting this anymore i just want to put this thing together okay out of here and i can't get to it with the ties on nope okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and pop these tires off real quick I need a bigger workbench. That's that's part of my issue, I think. Honestly, I'm I'm serious. I, I definitely need a bigger bench. This bench, it, it's like you think that when you design like an eight foot, nine foot bench, that you're gonna be good. It's definitely not enough, at least for somebody like me. So, all right. So now we're up here, and now I can definitely get to that. Hopefully, I got the right bit. Looks like I'm good. And coffee jitters. And I'm going to go ahead and screw that in. Definitely too long. <laughs> but man, that front bumper is definitely going to hold. I'll tell you that. Oh, that's definitely going to hold in there, I'll tell you that. Hey, you got that? <laughs> oh my god, dude. This build, man. This build had better be supplying some stinking laughs. I'm telling you. This better supply some laughs to people. So now we got these screws here. Uh, probably what I should have done was made sure that it was going to be long enough. And... Let's check and see if it's uh, like a freight train. Uh, okay, I think that'll be all right. It probably should take a deeper threaded screw, but for now, that's what I'm going with. Because kind of that's all I've got right now. So I do have that little bumper thing in there. Swing that thing down. Put that into place here. Like that. I think that's it. I'm just going to use this as kind of like a guide. So that is in the hole. And. Dang, that's really not many threads. Definitely would have been better using a deeper threaded deal here. So let's see what's going on here. Hopefully this will go right into place. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. It's sucking the bumper up. Or oh, the skid plate, sorry. Okay. That did grab. That grabbed. Okay, that did grab. So now we need to mount this bumper. It's going this way. And it's only one way for that thing to go. Two screws in through the front. And the next size screws that I've got left, I ain't using those M30s. The next size screws that I've got that are long are these ones, which are 16. So 
So we'll go ahead and pop a 16 out. These are the techno screws where they gave me the one extra, well, not one extra screw, they screwed up. They gave me the wrong screw. But what I want to do is just poke one out and check the depth here. And that goes all the way through. So uh, I guess this will be fine. Seeing that goes all the way through. So that's right here. Bam. And it didn't go all the way through. So that's the perfect size. And then pop out another one. Go for the next hole. Bam. Okay, front bump is on. Okay, I thought it was loose. What it is, it's the actual bumper hits down on the skid plate a little bit. So, looks like we're good there. Uh, now I'm just going to take the body, throw the body on real quick again, just because I want to see. Things should definitely clear now. And let's see. Does kind of look a little funny because it's not all the way in. There we go. So the bumper does sit below, but on my truck, that is how it's going to be. So on my truck, that's how the bumper is. So there is definitely an air gap here. Because I cannot sit this further down. If I wanted to maybe heat the body and kind of roll it down, maybe that would work. But this is the way I'm going. This is just going to have to be how it is. When it impacts, that's just it. I'm not going with that other body because that's going to put on another 200 bucks, and I'm not I'm not interested in that. So until I actually have to, that's just the way we're going to go right here. So if I did get a body, I'd throw on the XRT body, but not not right now. All right, so now moving back on to right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cover plate back on. Making sure I'm orienting it the right way. Get some golden screws. Really, how do I... Lose screws, dude. Like I'm like so serious. Like how do I lose screws, man? Everything was on the bench. <laughs> oh! That's it. I fired. Man, I'm out of here. I'm not even gonna tell you what just happened. By the sound, if you watch the other videos, you already know what just happened. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go after another screw here. Bam. Good thing I've got that whole kit. Throw this screw down. This is the rabbit hole for more than one reason. All right, let's see. Tighten that bad boy down. That feels good. Jump over here, and that's good. So, I did say something about mounting the switch. So let's spin this around. And then figure out the possibility of figure out the possibility of where we're gonna mount this switch here. So we are not definitely not limited on definitely not limited on real estate of where we can mount this switch. It's just where does this switch make sense to mount? Do you know what I'm saying? Like go like this. Does it make sense to mount it here? There's a flat spot right there. I could maybe mount it there. I could maybe mount it right there. I think Earl mounted his right here. Um, I could maybe mount it there. What the heck is those that for? So that's for something. See what I'm saying? Traxxas, something is going on here. Well, you've got holes. They look like it mounts some type of cage or something. I wonder if they're making an on-road car, an on-road plastic car. 
on-road plastic. Because why would these holes be here? What is this for? Oh, that mounts the optional stuff, doesn't it? That mounts uh, maybe the light kit. That's what that must be for. Okay, never mind. Thought I was seeing something magical. All right, so I technically could do that because I don't have the light kit, but then again, if I wanted to tuck things, I could mount it there. Mount it there, that's too close to the battery. So, man, I guess I could mount it right there. So I do have, um, I did have a strip of the Velcro. Bam. And that could literally mount right there. I don't think that's going to be a conflict with the under part of the body. And that's a, that's a definite, not a conflict. So. Oh. <laughs> hey, it fell, it fell down through the chassis hole. All right. So I can definitely mount that right there. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm just going to literally just stick it right down. I'm not even going to put it to the switch or anything. So clean enough. Stick. Now the switch itself I had already cleaned. So that's good to go. So I will just cut a piece that is going to fit the switch and I'll cut it the whole size should I cut it the whole size of the switch that's what I should do right there and literally just cut it right there come right here Let's see if that takes the whole thing okay so I could technically mount I do want full engagement of that stuff. So I'll just do that. And I'll do like what I was just gonna do. I'll just notch it. So here we go. Just cut that right off. Take this tape, stick it right to the switch. Oh man. Am I messing up? <laughs> Good enough. I don't know if that's going to stay. <laughs> that might not be enough. Well, we'll find out. I'm just really low on this uh, stuff. So we'll see if that's going to work. At least it's a centrally located type of deal on off. Uh, I think I'll be able to access the switch with the body on too. That may have been a good thing. Why didn't I think to put it right there? Oh man, if I put it there... Oh, man. Okay, it won't go, that's why. All right, that kind of doesn't seem like it's going to stay, but we'll try it anyway. So the switch is basically going to be bobbling around and turning the truck off. So we're good there. So that's good. Now what I'm uh, moving on to, moving on to the rear, um, rear setup here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull these wheels off just to make it <clears throat> a little bit easier to manage. see we're getting getting really limited on space here all right wheels are off so now let's figure out hooking this up with the body and i'm still missing this piece so that little round piece i'm still missing I do have the extra little bumper piece that is not needed because I am using the wheelie bar. So isn't that funny? So the piece that I didn't need was in the package and the piece that I did need wasn't in the package for the front bumper. Figure that one. Okay. Uh, I have no mount. 
So let's just fit the body on real quick. So I can see right away I still need to trim because this, this wing needs to kind of stay there. So that does mean that I have to trim the body. So let's um, keep this on the left and right side. Bring this body down, clamp it down. So I'm, I'm fairly good with that right there. So the wing needs to slot in and that's going in pretty deep so I would be cutting the body right along that edge so pretty much where I've got this edge right here is I think where I would end up cutting the body and like I said I think I didn't want to cut right all right I'm gonna shut this off because this is gonna be a lot of waste of your time You're not going to believe what just happened. I just put the truck together. I just put the truck all together. And I don't think I hit record. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. See, this is saying lost connection. Basically, I just lost everything. Truck is all together. Got the 3D printed part in the back there. Grease the diffs, I put the cover on, the truck is basically ready to rip, I put the tires and wheels on, and I think it's just literally because it's so late that I think I forgot, I forgot to hit record. <sighs> Whatever. Well, it'll be a short video. But anyways, things all together, I think this is what I was hoping for. In the very beginning, there's only one thing that may have to change, but we'll see if it works out. If it works out, I will not change it. There is the possibility that the way this is set up is going to be meant. Got to keep remembering it when I get greasy fingerprints. Anyways, whatever. It's all together, man. Rear wing is on. Uh, diffs are greased, and that's it. So anyway, this is RC Guy Garage, and that's like the second time I said this is RC Guy Garage, but like, dude, I gotta get to sleep, so I'm, uh, I'm going to bed.